Today is where we explore fascinating stories and controversies in the world of medicine. Today, we delve into the life of Dr. J. Marion Sims, often called the father of modern gynecology. Was he a hero who advanced women's health care or a villain who exploited vulnerable patients? Let's find out. Dr. J. Marion Sims was born in 1813 in South Carolina. He rose from humble origins to become a successful surgeon, teacher, writer, and one of the most highly recognized doctors in America by the time of his death in 1883. He had a strong passion for medicine and surgery, which led him to pioneer several groundbreaking techniques in the field of gynecology. Sims is credited with inventing the Sims speculum and developing a surgical technique for repairing vesicovaginal fistulas, a devastating condition that can result from childbirth complications in which a hole develops between a woman's bladder and her vagina and leads to constant, unremitting, and uncontrollable urinary incontinence. These contributions undoubtedly improved women's health care at the time. Today's gynecologists still use his instrument and... It's a core element of their practice. Now the controversy. Sims' disregard for the suffering of these women with today's standards makes him a villain. He is accused of perpetuating the exploitation and dehumanization of enslaved individuals in the name of medical progress. The primary reason for these attacks on Sims is that his initial attempts to cure vesicovaginal fistulas were carried out on a group of enslaved African-American women who he quartered in a small hospital behind his house in Montgomery, Alabama. Between 1845 and 1849, he carried out repeated operations on these women in a dogged effort to repair their injuries. One young woman, an enslaved woman, named Anarcho, with a particularly difficult combination of vesicovaginal and rectovaginal fistulas, underwent 30 operations before Sims was able to close the holes in her bladder and rectum. Many of the operations Sims performed were while the patient was awake with no sedatives, even though they were readily available to him at the time. The aforementioned procedures were not the only ones Sims performed either. He did many exploratory surgeries on enslaved women who were not allowed to say no. These were painful surgeries and often left permanent damage, if not death, to the women he operated on. Here's the defender's perspective. On the other hand, some defenders of Sims argue that his innovations, although ethically questionable to say the least, by today's standards, did ultimately benefit women's health. They contend that we should consider the historical context in which he operated. He was a doctor who, at the time, researched a topic many didn't deem important enough to care about, meaning he saw women were having postpartum problems and thought he could figure out what was going on, why it was happening, and how he could fix it. Sims' legacy continues to spark debates among medical professionals and ethicists. It raises important questions about the balance between medical progress and ethics. Regardless of what we think personally, we cannot deny that without Sims, women's health would not be where it is today. In the end, the question of whether Dr. J. Marion Sims is a hero or villain depends on one's perspective. He made significant contributions to gynecology, but his ethical lapses in conducting experiments on vulnerable individuals cannot be ignored. Today, we have better technology, and we at the health department work to make sure everyone is armed with information about themselves and the options available to them. The more you know, the less daunting the decisions. That's why we work to make sure you have the tools you need to make those decisions. In public health, we have this thing called the 10 Essential Public Health Services. These public health services provide a framework for public health to protect and promote the health for all in the communities. To achieve equity, the essential public health services actively promote policies, systems, and overall community conditions that enable optimal health for all and seek to remove systemic and structural barriers that have resulted in health inequities, something that wasn't around during Sims' time. Those women didn't have someone advocating for them. But today, we have a framework laying out how we can improve and ensure that we do better. We encourage you to pick hero, villain, or something in between. Let us know in the comments.